So what is the percent composition of each element here in calcium dihydrogen phosphate? Well, first thing we got to do is first find the mass. So let's use this table to help us out. Bam. So the first thing we have to do is identify the various elements in this compound. So I see I have an element of calcium, I have hydrogen, I have phosphorus, and I have oxygen. So you're basically just labeling the letters, all right, or the elements, essentially, that you see. Next is to consider the number of atoms of each element we have. So there is a subscript of one here for calcium. So that means that calcium has one atom in calcium dihydrogen phosphate. Hydrogen now. Uh, in dihydrogen phosphate here, there are two hydrogens. But you don't have one dihydrogen phosphate. You have two of them. And therefore, there would be four hydrogens in total. You take the subscript here of hydrogen and multiply it by the outside subscript, all right, for the dihydrogen phosphate. So that means there is four. Same thing with phosphorus. The subscript is one, but then you have to multiply it by two. So there's two phosphorus. And then for oxygen, same thing. There's four oxygen here in dihydrogen phosphate, but then you have two dihydrogen phosphates. So therefore, you got to multiply that by two. So that's a total of eight. Now, all we're simply going to do is then multiply these number of atoms by the mass of each particular element. And guess where we look for the masses? Yes, the periodic table. So let's take a look. Here is the mass of calcium, 40.08, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, phosphorus is 30.97, and oxygen is 16. And these are now going to get written down. Now, they will represent grams per mole if you're talking about molar mass, or AMU if you're talking about molecular mass. All right, so let's write it on down. So calcium was 40.08, hydrogen was 1.01, .01, phosphorus was 30.97, and oxygen is 16. To find then the total mass of the element in the compound here, all you're simply going to do is multiply this row together. So to find the total mass of calcium now, it's simply 40.08. Because it's just 40.08 times 1. For hydrogen, it would be 4 times 1.01, .01, so that's 4.04. .04. Here we're going to multiply uh, 30.97 by 2, right? So that's 61.94. And then we have 8 oxygens, so we're going to multiply that on out. So that's about 128. And then to find the total mass now of the entire compound down here, all you have to simply do, add this column together. That's it. So when you do that, it comes out to be about 234, 234.06. So now we've got the first step completed. So now we have the mass, the total mass of calcium dihydrogen phosphate. Now what we can do is we can now simply find the mass percents of each of these elements now in the chemical formula. All I'm going to simply do now is add another column and it'll be nice and straightforward. Bam. So now all we're going to do is we're simply going to take the total mass of a particular element. So here, like for calcium, we're going to take that total mass of calcium, 40.08, and then we're going to divide it then by the total mass of the compound of 234.06. All right. And since, like I said, it doesn't really matter if you're dealing with molar mass, you know, gram per mole here, basically for molar mass or AMU, it, the magnitude of the numbers uh, will be uh, what is important. So when we do the math here, and remember this is just a simple percent, part over whole times 100, right? So now when we do this out, we're going to come up to or come out to a percentage of roughly 17.12. So that's the percent of calcium in calcium dihydrogen phosphate. For hydrogen then, you take the total mass of the hydrogen, 4.04. .04. Do not take its simple molecular mass or its molar mass. You got to take the total. So it's this column. Then it's going to be 200, divide that by 234.06, multiply that by 100, and we're going to have a percent here of about 1.73. All right, so I'm, I'm rounding there to two decimal places, basically. Uh, same thing for phosphorus, 61.94, divided by the total mass of the entire compound, 234, right, 0 0.06. You see how routine this becomes? And then that's going to work out to be about 26.46%. Last but not least, we got to do the same thing for our oxygen. So that's 128. I'm just going to skip the zeros because quite honestly, it doesn't really matter. 234.06 times then 100. And that's going to come out to a percentage of roughly 54.69 or so. Now, when you add these together, if you add the exact percentages together, okay, what should happen is you should get a total then of 100%. If you add the rounded values here, it might be very, very close or exactly 100. It depends. Uh, but, you know, you should be definitely very, very close to that 100%. And that's all we have. That's all there is to it. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please help us out if you can. Like, subscribe, maybe even tell your classmates. We've got thousands of other videos out there in different subjects, not only uh, for chemistry here, but physics and mathematics. And we got more coming. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you.